Right. So uh, welcome to this um, uh, far side chat. Um, thank you for everybody who's uh, turning up for this and it will also be recorded and uh, distributed. And it's really, really wonderful that I get to talk to colleague, friend, GA for GHA, uh, David Torrance, um, who's here. So David, um, uh, so just for people to know what's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna sort of have a conversation with David we may well run out of time, to be honest, but uh, I will try and make sure there's some time where people can ask questions. And I think you can just put the questions in the chat box um, uh, uh, for this as well as it goes. But let me start, David, maybe you should just describe, you know, your career briefly. You know, I think you started as a as a wet uh, biologist, if I'm right, and um, and how did you yes. end, uh, how did you end up in Barcelona? So, give a little little sketch of your career. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, thank you first for the invitation and for um, for uh, the chat. Uh, yes, I actually started with very classical biochemistry, uh, trying to to uh, find the function of some transporters in in cells. And I did the PhD all in my in bench in the bench. At the end of my PhD, I thought I was doing bioinformatics because I basically did a couple of blast uh, searches. So that's what uh, people in, from the bench thought that bioinformatics was at that time. <laughs> I'm talking about 90, 96, 97. So, uh, and then I finished my thesis and I went to the MBL to, and I moved, I crossed the line and I moved to bioinformatics in the group of Pierre Bork. And as I told you the other day, my first crash was with GeneWise, that wonderful program. It was the time for uh, genome annotation uh and it was a very interesting time uh, all the new genomes coming the mouse uh, so i started with the mouse it was the first draft of the human was just uh, finished and um, i entered with the mouse then came the rat the mosquito uh all the chromosomes uh, human chromosomes separately then uh, chimp and what we were doing there was basically using GeneWise and, and uh, trying to annotate pseudogenes and, and genes. I mean, we did not want to go into genes because already Roderick and, you know, and many others were doing a lot of things there. And uh, yes, and then I stayed in Heidelberg in the MBL for uh, six years, six and something years. And then I went back to Barcelona and I was offered a position, I got an ICREA position, and I was uh, offered a group leader position at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And at the beginning, I thought, uh, that, okay, that's not my place. I come in, come on. I, I'm, I'm biochemist, and, and I'm now ending up in bioinformatics in, in a supercomputing center surrounded by uh, computing people. But then soon I realized that was uh, actually a great move. At that time, because uh, all the data explosion started, and basically it was great to have a computer and uh, a lot of disk and a lot of computing uh, ready for research, and that's one of the beauties of, of uh, the BSc, and still is like this, and uh, that has me, yeah. And that's great, David. And uh, now, actually, I believe the Barcelona supercomputer has been awarded the most beautiful computer in Europe and the <laughs> yes. computer <laughs> yes. in the world. So, so for the people who haven't seen the Barcelona supercomputer, you know, where is it? Why did it get this award for the most beautiful computer? Yeah, it, in the world? It, uh, at some at some points, it has been also uh, the most powerful computing uh, computer in Europe in the world. I, I, was among the first uh, first but you know computing after two weeks uh, then you're not the first one anymore but we're still i believe i i don't know but i we're still uh, the most beautiful one because it's basically within a chapel and uh, that's quite uh, impressive to see so everybody that comes to barcelona there is a uh, actually the bsc has been uh, organizing visits and there are a lot of schools going to to the 
to visit the center and I invite everybody that uh, goes to Barcelona to to go to the BSC page and 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 visit because it's worth it's worth seeing it yeah and I think it just shows that classic Barcelona flair of of combining, you know, <laughs> great architecture with great science. It, it, it really is a, it's something that somehow how represents that kind of um, the spirit of the science city there, yeah? Yes, 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 that's that's uh, exactly, yes. I mean, Barcelona, has, you have been following Barcelona very closely and you know, but Barcelona has grown scientifically um, for the last 20 years, uh, it has been amazing the the change that has uh, has been, and uh, we are now, I would say, in, in the world of genomics, bioinformatics, Spain as well, but uh, Barcelona, uh, we are among the the first uh, cities around the world, and and actually we are quite uh, happy for this, and and the BSC is is quite a special place because. Um, I mean, we are almost thousand uh, uh, researchers already, so that's quite 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 big. But the good thing about this this uh, supercomputing center is that is an infrastructure, but has um, research groups and research departments around it. So that means, and actually, that's what I I think it's one of the the the, the best parts of the BSc. So whenever we want to run something or to we have some big project in mind. We uh, literally sit down with the support and the system and the, and the management uh, of the computing, and uh, we can work out best solutions to 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 carry on that project. And that's not uh, I don't think it happens in in other in other supercomputing centers where research is a little bit more separated than than the service from from the computing, and that's. I think one of the this has been one of the key parts in 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 the BSC. And, yeah, just and now maybe just talk us through EU CanCan -Can and and that project and yeah and why why you you kind of came to Geo for GH as well uh, as a driver project. Yeah. Yes. So uh, uh, it was not intentional. So everything came natural because we were involved in ICGC first as a center and as also as a group. We were doing a lot of cancer genomics. Then we were involved in pan cancer, and uh, there the contact mostly with Lincoln and and other other uh, uh, researchers around the pan cancer project. We got really into the infrastructure to move data, to analyze data. So then we had the opportunity to ask for money. There was a call, the European call, and we had an idea that was to create a network, Canadian and European network for. To allow data sharing, and uh, yeah, we got it. And you can can then we we asked uh, the the GA for GH to be a driver project, and I think it fits very well with with the activity of uh, Global Alliance. So, and that's how I ended up more uh, involved in uh, Global Alliance for for genomics and health. And yes, I'm I'm happy. And then we 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 actually we then pushed the the um, for this meeting for the plenary to be in Barcelona. That's also part of uh, of uh, Ana Ripoll and Jaume Delgado that uh, pushed a lot uh, a lot from the BIP. That's by Informatics Barcelona, where I'm now vice president. So everything kind of came around us, and uh, yeah, that's. Um, that's more or less the the story. Uh, that's perfect. And um, let's just touch on that plenary. Obviously, it's going to be in Barcelona. It's in a couple of weeks' time. I, I'll I'll just yep. remind everybody who's who's here live, and also if you're watching this, that you can still register um, and you can still turn up. Though I think we we're running out of we're going to run out of space soon. I think we have I don't know how many people are are physically attending now. It must be over two hundred. So, but but David, not everybody would um, know um, um, about Barcelona and and the, these kind of locations. So just just describe, you know, where where this meeting is going to be held, and and maybe a quick sketch yes. of uh, of of the how to think about Barcelona itself. 
Yes. Well, we we really uh, got one of the best places in Barcelona where this the meeting can be held because it's uh, it's a scientific museum. And actually, it's worth to visit. So I encourage everybody that goes to the meeting because actually, when you go to the meeting and there's some instructions that we have to send, and here I remind Justina, we have to send some instructions because people actually have to enter into the museum. So uh, on top of the meeting, they can visit the whole museum, and it's uh, it's a beautiful museum. It's uh, it's a scientific museum full of uh, some some parts of. Uh, of physics and uh, evolution, DNA, so it's very, very nice. And also the timing is very good because uh, the 24th is actually the big day for Barcelona, is a big holiday for Barcelona, is the day of Barcelona, Merced is called. And uh, there are a lot of activities, so also I encourage, not only because the plenary is going to be very interesting, but also to people, encourage people to stay over the weekend if they can, because there's going to be, the city is going to be very, a lot of activity is going to be around the city. So that's that's also worth to to keep in mind. Yeah. Yes. And and just, you know, as I, I've always loved Barcelona and and um, just just correct me if I got the geography wrong, wrong here. So Barcelona is really around the beach uh, the sea. It's it's an old yeah. medieval port city, and this is kind of up the hill, isn't it? It's further it's further up, but still quite an easy walk, or or a very easy metro to. to yes, 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 yes. It's it, yeah, it's it's yeah. true that this museum you need to take a bus, uh, or or uh, or metro to get there. But uh, it's it's quite easy to to from from the museum to get downtown, yeah. and from downtown start walking through the Gothic area and through yes that's and actually through the through the Ramblas until the harbor. Yeah. So that's uh, yeah that's 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 yeah I think it's and, it's, and, it's and September is perfect and September yeah. if if it doesn't rain. <laughs> that uh, some people are waiting for rain next they want rain because we are uh, having problems well as as many other countries but uh it's perfect weather it's the perfect weather so yes. um, and um uh, and indeed and actually getting there by bus or metro or being in the hotel up there will be one thing um but then um walking down will be much easier right to the gothic yes 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 yes. Walk down yes, the yes and actually there are some some buses some some services that will that will move people around so that's yes that's the the um, the efforts from the secretariat from go alliance that are doing uh, an amazing job an amazing job right. So I can see that Justina has added a Slido uh, question uh, system here. So if you click on the group thing, you can pop in your question. I'm still going to quiz David a little bit more, but do uh, come up with your questions, which I, I will kind of feed through to David. Um, uh, but David, um, what's what catches your eye about the plenary when you look at the agenda? What, what which talks are you interested in in listening to? Uh, yes, well, uh, it's quite broad, and actually it was uh, quite a lot of work to try to get uh, uh, this uh, quite uh, a lot of sessions and and uh, and and a broad spectrum of of topics. Um, many 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 of the sessions are very interesting from the local point of view, and from the European point of view, I think. Uh, Europe should be more involved and and uh, and engaged in global alliance. I think because uh, we know about it, the Commission knows about it. Actually, global alliance appears in many of the calls as as uh, standards that people have to follow. But I think we still have to push it a little bit more uh, inside Europe. And uh, for Spain is great because uh, some, I mean, in Spain, uh, some politicians and people that have power to start moving things in the right direction actually became very interested in, 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 in the meeting. And, and uh, so, so locally, it's 
going to be great. Also, we, I mean, it's, it's, uh, I think it's going to be more global than ever, uh, yeah. this, this meeting. That's my impression. Also, it's going to be mostly in person. So that's very nice because we kind of uh, recover the pre pandemic uh, sensation of uh, going into a meeting. And uh, I think that's, that, can, that can help. And uh, yes. So, I mean, I'm also, I think there's, there's all of that. I think the, the session on, on AI for genomics as well, blending yeah. in new AI, AI aspects, I think that looks really, really um, uh, interesting. And then, as you say, I think we're that in-person business, I, the plenary, we've always had it so that people who are interested in geo for gh but don't necessarily know yeah. about how it works or what we're doing or why, which things are really working. It's a place where, where you, can, you can see that laid out, but you can also, in the coffee break or what have you, grab hold of someone and yes. say, you know, we want to do this or we want to link with that. I, David, I think that you know there's a, there's parts of Europe which which link nicely to GA for GH and and you know I always think about Michael Bordis and and the SIB and the personalized health Swiss personalized health yes. uh, network and yourself in EU can can yeah yeah and and and, and CRG Barcelona yes EGA, yes, yes. Um, yes, EGA, yes EGA has really made uh, GA for GH standards a big part of its of its kind of future but I think you're right that that where we you know, it's still very in the research domain, and, and we've got to get yeah. that engagement with with the healthcare and the health care. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. And I think that's you know something which is you know GA for GH has always wanted to have a foot in both camps because we know that it's important um, to advance the healthcare agenda and genomics in health, transfer the technology into the healthcare systems, but also have this responsible access to data for research yeah. and I know that's a, a a big thing for you if you had a magic wand I think you know that that data access and clinical data is really important so so why is that David what yes you know, well what, uh, what would you like to happen <laughs> magically in this world <laughs> so uh, uh if if we if we if we consider only the research world I think I think we should also push culturally uh, uh, data sharing or data access, and and we should push um, data reuse because uh, right now, and this is something I say in many talks, and people don't believe it, but right now there there are hundreds of thousands or millions of genomes in EGA. Um, without clinical data associated, only um, uh, diagnosis and, and age and gender, which it's very hard to do, to do much with this data. And actually, if we want the layer of AI to get really into the game and to advance in, in developing methods and really test methods, the first thing they find, and, and we are collaborating when actually in the group, we are pushing AI a lot, the first thing you find is that there is not enough data or the quality of the data is not there. And uh, many people say or justify this uh, is a legal issue. It's not a legal issue, it's a cultural issue. So clinical data is not there because researchers don't want to share clinical data. And that's uh, because uh, some people, Sometimes the data is not prepared, but data is in EGA or, or is ready to be reused, mostly because uh, journals force and have a rule that say, if you want to publish, you have to put the data into EGA. But then journals only require genomic data to be placed in, uh, in the EGA, for example, but not clinical data. So, and uh, there is still, uh, not uh, uh, a culture of, of, of sharing this data. So we are losing a lot of information and many genomes, many of the genomes that are in EGA or dbGaP also mostly, dbGaP has contains mostly arrays and, 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 but most of this data 
will never be linked again with the clinical data. Mm -hmm. So it's data that you can use to, yeah, to describe the genome and to describe genotypes, but not for a clinical purpose, because for that you clean but, your name. I think I, I understand totally where you're coming from. I, I do think that the, you know, the patients and the citizens might hear this conversation and worry that, that sharing data means disclosing data and sharing it on the internet and that people oh, could do oh, yes. so people could do the could do the wrong thing and i know that that's not what you probably it's think not no 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 uh, yeah. so to unpack you know when we talk about sharing clinical data in a world that you want to see what does that really look like how do we how do we keep the, the effectively the trust with our citizens and our patients that we're doing the right thing here Yes, well, the same we are doing with genomic data. So we we actually, when we download genomic data from EGA, uh, from a particular study, uh, we we ensure that this data is going to be only for research, only for the purpose that the patient has signed for. So it's not it's not going to go beyond those limits. So this is. Sharing data does not mean to make it public, uh, publicly available to anybody. It means within a certain uh, research uh, area and research question, and always controlled under under uh, patient consent, basically. Yeah. And, and I do think you know, as some of these data sets become population wide, be it Estonia, be it be it England, yeah. be it you know um, Denmark, I think we will see this visiting as well, where the data doesn't yeah. move, the, the researcher moves in some sense virtually, yes. just as we're doing now virtually, the researcher moves to that location. Yes. So we do have some questions, um, just one, but do people do ask some. Now, uh, Wandi Mew, I think, is, is interested in, in a much more practical question about whether there's short-term training of bioinformatics. And I'm not sure, Wandi Mew, if this is precisely the right place to, <laughs> to ask the question but let's let's see if both myself and 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 david can answer that so so um david is there is there bioinformatics courses which are which are open for people to come and train you know from the world um in barcelona do you run bioinformatics courses in barcelona well yes there are bioinformatics courses directed to many different audiences actually we are now pushing from the Bioinformatics Barcelona that is uh, concentrating out of courses, uh, not only for, for younger researchers that want to enter into, into bioinformatics, also for uh, clinical people and clinical professionals that need to understand what's all this of uh, data and bioinformatics as personalized medicine. So we are, we are generating those, those courses constantly so yes through the webs through the web um, i don't know now any any particular i cannot give any any particular link but uh yes there are there are embo also organizes uh, very good courses around bioinformatics yes so i and and thank you david and i've just i've just put a link there in the chat to the ebi courses which yeah the ebi yes uh, both virtual one to move so you can you can look at them you can do them asynchronously and there are some in-person ones as well and you're welcome to obviously apply but but i think you can be supported in travel as well for that so please please do so um uh i don't know if there are more questions let's have a look slido update okay not yet so I will keep on uh, at this. I was going to ask. <laughs> um, so, so David, um, you know, if you look at at your colleagues in the EU CanCan project there across across Europe, you know, what do you feel is the place where where you're going to make an impact over, you know, maybe a year's time or two years or three years time? What what do you think is the where where we'll will make a make an impact on on people outside of the research domain really um uh in using this data what are you most excited about well out, outside from the research domain uh it depends on the on the country and how the healthcare system uh, works in that country 
So, but uh, what what we are what we are generating in you can can and we we did not want to 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 uh, design another project to make more tools because Elixir is there, Global Alliance is there, so you already are making tools and standards. So what we wanted in you can can is to bridge them together and to make some some functional uh, um, platform or some functional infrastructure together with the analysis part together with the legal part so at the end and and what we are aiming now is a uh, uh, constructing a recipe to try to give uh, answer to a particular problem or particular request that some centers can have for example what do we do imagine three hospitals four hospitals in europe or around us or across the ocean that want to start sharing data uh, and want to do it in a federated way so we, we give a complete recipe technical methodological analysis legal uh, to be able to do this so uh, it's it's kind of a so again instead of going for the pieces we want to give a global solution for a particular problem yeah. That's, that's so what I think, this, yeah. I think this comes to a question that we've come up on, on Slido and maybe, you know, can you elaborate on the approach of visiting the data in situ rather than moving it around? What resources would it be required if you want to set this up? I think it's a very practical question. I mean, yes. if you do want yes. to allow people to visit data, what, what do you need to have? Uh, visiting data, it's, you know, it requires computing power mm -hmm. where the data is uh then it could be through cloud computing some some centers are going through uh, google amazon clouds or where you can actually access the data and 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 pay and pay for cpus uh in our case in you can can we have different uh, uh different uh structures on different places for example in the bsc or in barcelona there are three different clinical centers, EDBAPS, EDBAPS, and BIO. And uh, the BSC would be linking the data to, 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 to yeah, and, and, and uh, providing uh, CPU and access. Other centers like Carité in Berlin, they have it more compact. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's a difficult question still, and I don't know whether there is a clear answer because most of the places, uh, UK Biobank and Genomics England is different. You are way ahead. <laughs> you are way ahead. And uh, you have a center and facilities that uh, I think it's, it's a model to follow. But actually, you have to go there physically to, to work with some of the data if you want to use uh, um, computing power. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, um, just to say, you know, I, I think that that I'm I'm British, but I'm European, as you know, David. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you there is uh, is an interesting view, um, yeah. but uh, but definitely, I I think, but but what you've just said there about the BSC bringing together different yeah. clinical groups in Barcelona, I I think the thing which is common is that is that the to 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 provide data in a way that researchers can come to visit and do something with the data. Do something, yes. yes. Uh, so just yes. visiting the data by itself is, is not good enough. You, you, you really need to, to do something. There needs to be enough capacity and scale. There needs to be a team that's going to run yes, a, yes. Uh, a private cloud or yes. a, a compute setup or, or, or something. And, and there's quite a lot of data flow, I think, which is very easy to ignore in this thing. You know, how do I actually assemble the data from different sources perhaps and so i think i think there's this feeling that one needs to it certainly has to be higher than a single hospital i think is the is sure is sure what, what i have noticed whether that's you know here locally i know that in in cambridge uk they're going to be running it for the east of england for for a number of different hospitals they're going to be bringing data together to to provide data access exactly the same thing in denmark very yeah. much the way they're doing it yes, in yes. Um, yes, yes. and this kind of collaborate you know this bringing them together and i think 
I think the other thing to 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 not worry too much about is, of course, the solution that, for example, Estonia might find or England might find will be different from the solution that Barcelona or Madrid or sure. Spain yes, might find. Yes. Because the healthcare system is different in Spain. Yes. This is how healthcare is run in Spain. Therefore, yes. this is how we organize our, our, our systems. And so I don't think, um, although we can absolutely learn from each other and we have to have the same standards if we want to combine data sets, which I think, or the combine analysis, um, I, think it, I think it's really important to empower people like, I mean, like yourselves, like the BSC, like the, the I, I can't list all the hospitals in Barcelona. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But, but, uh, but it's, but it's, it's happened, yeah. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's important and uh, it doesn't matter who's the first and, and, and how it's pushed, but it's important that healthcare systems see other healthcare systems from other countries, what they can do. Yes. Because then, then is when they start moving. Well, I mean, I think you're right. And as you know, David, I've, I'm very lucky that I'm on, on the non-executive director of Genomics England. So the we, the you in Genomics England was was more valid. Um, and, you know, it, it it's a point of pride for me that, 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 you know, Genomics England with the NHS is delivering for, for, for um, patients um, in England, um, there is a Scottish equivalent, by the way, and, and Wales plays in with England. I, I, won't, I won't bore you with the local politics. <laughs> um, so, so it all works out. Um, you know, in that case, we, Genomics England has made a real success story of rare disease. I mean, it really works. Um, it's very good. Cancer, I think, is interesting, though, because of this need of, of very quick... I mean, cancer is just complicated inherently. The disease is yes. inherently, yes. yeah. And then if you want to be involved in a clinical decision making, very often you've got to be, you know, within seven days, within 14 days yes. of delivery of the result. Yeah. Yes. Do you have but, any but, experience there? Well, but 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 rare with with rare, rare diseases, it's kind of it it's easier to implement because hospitals already had people prepared and uh, for for uh, sequencing uh, genes, mostly it was gene panels, but uh, genetic diagnosis for rare diseases was already implemented in hospitals. So you just have to add the technology for bigger, I mean, not only, but it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying. But for cancer, you have to build up a whole new analysis, uh, uh, a way of analysis and, and a way of seeing the problem. That's what makes it complicated for, for, for cancer. Also, the teams in hospitals were already they know about uh, uh, inherited uh, and, and, and rare diseases. Uh, and and there, is, there is professionals already working in this direction. In cancer, there are not. Mm -hmm. So you have to build up a, a whole new community, a new department, a whole, that's, that's what, on top of the, how complex the, the cancer itself is. And, and, but that's also how, how hospitals, at least in Spain, and, and I think in many, in many places in the world, that's why everybody and, and Denmark also started with rare diseases and, and all, all countries started with rare diseases. But if you create success stories on around rare diseases, that encourages more uh, uh, activity around the healthcare system, which is what at the end we need. We need them to, to turn the head and look at us, basically. David, it's a pleasure, pleasure talking to you. Um, I hope... Um people have found this interesting if you're listening to this on the recording i hope you found it interesting on the recording um and um probably the most important thing is do come to the plenary um ideally in person barcelona is so beautiful and such a wonderful place but also you can come virtually and participate in much of it as well so do come to a plenary where you get to see myself and david um david in his natural environment